Hi, just a quick video. I've got a uh, battery bank here that's failed. It's a Jackery Jobby, so they're supposed to be a decent brand. Um, and I've had no problems with it until recently. Uh, it's got power delivery um, output, so I use it for, you know, little portable soldering irons and all sorts of other power delivery uh, stuff. And um, so that's in and out, so you charge it through there. It's also got uh, standard USB output as well. And there you go, there's the uh, various specs for those playing along at home. And um, it's just died. So this is the 260 PD model. Probably quite a few years old now, but uh, you know, it's not absolutely ancient. I use it for, um, <laughs> got Velcro on the back, so this actually attaches to the Velcro on my tripod so that I can power um, stuff out in the field and things like that. And there's four LEDs in there, um, and it does not have any charge, and it will not accept any charge, and it will not do anything. So, I'm uh, going to crack it open. Let's go. Um, I assume that the panels come off somehow. So, start at the arse end. No, maybe not start at the arse end. Let's start up this end, perhaps. There we go. Oh, hello. Oh, already lost a bit of my spudger. Yeah, it doesn't like that at all. All right. It's going to be a fight. No, there's definitely more to it than that. All right, gonna have to get a bit medieval on its ass. I can see, I can see it. It's thin. I can, I actually saw daylight. Oh, it's pretty close. All right, there's there's clips and stuff. It may not may not come out intact. There's got to be a trick to it, right? Did these all the time. You would have it down pat, but no. Nope. Just a pro tip, you do want to use a plastic spudger for these because you don't want to go uh, inserting a metal spudger inside a power bank. Um, <laughs> probably not not a good idea. Um, yeah, I don't know. I might have to get a stiff metal. Ugh, that's what she said. Seriously, I'm like right in there. It's just like plastic clips. You can see them. But you've got to like do them all at once. Do I have to pry both sides? At once? I wouldn't have thought so. So it looks like the bottom side there doesn't have, like the plastic goes in further than the top side. Oh man, really after going to get medieval on sass in a minute, because this is just ridiculous. I mean, I can understand that these things have to be robust because they get, you know, thrown around in packs and whatnot. Hey! <laughs> okay, that, that was it. It really had to get leverage in there. Wow. I didn't break it though. Didn't break it. Look, you can see an inductor in there. It's got some snot on it. And uh, I assume that, yeah, there's more plastic on the bottom. So this isn't, it's not going to slide out. Really? There's a thermistor down there. It's going off. So that's measuring the pack temperature. Yeah, this is supposed to be a decent brand, Jackery. So I'm a bit disappointed that it's failed. I think I paid reasonable amount of coin for it. So that's bottom of the PCB. So they've got the leads on the leads on the bottom of the board. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Look, look, they've got a hook. That uh, really annoying. But I thought I like got part. Yeah, no, you've got to get past those. You've got to. Yeah. Okay. There's so uh, there's no clips on the bottom. It's just those two clips on the top. Right. I, I think now, now with that knowledge, I would be able to uh, do this better now. <laughs> <laughs> so once you know, you know, but oh, is there some sort of like, they put like celastic or something at the end of it? But once again, that, that, that would have snapped by now. Oh, I need one of those old school medieval stretching racks. Oh. <laughs> it's almost as if there's like celastic in there holding it back. Um, like, cause it's, it's stretching like, and then, it, and then there's something that pulls it back. Oh, hello. Got it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pliers for the win. Here we go. Ta-da! And... No, there's no Celastic. Really? Looks uh, pretty good. <laughs> a, it has the correct number of <laughs> cells in there, and they're probably good. They're probably good cells. Let's have a look. Look, see, can we see the... Can we see a brand? ICR 18650. Okay, here we go. They've got a... Uh, I, an EVE is the brand by the looks of it. And that's the data sheet. So energy very endure. <laughs> energy very endure. <laughs> I love my energy to endure. 
<laughs> so they're the cells used inside 26V. Yep, yep. So that's exactly what we've got here. As you can see, 26V. All right, so let's measure. Are they in series or parallel? Because, yeah, like the K wire goes over to here, so that doesn't make much sense, and it looks like that's connected to that. So it looks like they might, they're at least, I can see a bar going across there. Can I see? Yeah, I can see one going across there. Yeah, I think they're all in parallel. Got a uh, boost um, uh, converter in here, obviously, to get it up to the 5 volts and the power delivery and everything else. 3.58, that's bang on. That's basically an operating nominal operating voltage of a lithium ion cell. I can get down there, I can measure that and that. It's exactly the same. Something has died in the arse here. Can we see any obvious failures? Any blowholes? MOSFETy action down there. Let's look at, I mean, you know, it could be a dodgy, dodgy joint on the connector. That looks pretty clean, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks pretty okay, doesn't it? Can't see what chip it uses down in there. Okay, got some current shunt resistors there. They look fine. Everything looks fine, like... So yeah, that'd be for uh, current sensing of the... Because here's from the battery, right? Two parallel 10 milli so is that 5 milliohms? And, uh... Oh, no cells in inductive wire. Can we see a chippy number down there? But everything looks okay, doesn't it? An SW6124. It's a total solution for power delivery for bi-directional fast charge power bank. <laughs> it's a highly integrated power management IC. It integrates 4 amp switching charger, 18 watt, uh, yeah, which matches the spec of this. Um, synchronous boost. Uh, it's got power delivery and all the, uh, and uh, quick charge and all the requisite um, standards. Uh, fuel gauge and power controller. With simple, it does, it, it even does those LED. Uh, readout's probably got like four lead outputs or something. Yeah, turnkey for high efficiency. So yeah, if you're designing a battery pack, this is exactly what you get. So yeah, it does the business and there is the internal. So yeah, we've got the external FET, um, which we saw in there, didn't we? So we saw some FETs in there. Yeah, as I said, they got the uh, four pins there for the lead, LEDs or five. They're only integrating four here. It's got a flashlight. <laughs> so yeah, basically, there it is. Uh, about five milliohms. There we go. We saw the five milliohms, the two ten milliohms in parallel there. So the battery goes in there. It's, yeah. Um, okay, we've got our, the big ass external inductor. Um, and Bob's your uncle. So these are going to be uh, battery protection. So they're in the low side, the battery there. Um, saw those in a recent... Uh, tear down oh no a recent um repair um like a, a answering a uh, twitter question um so one of those kinds of things and uh yeah so that'll do battery that'll do cell protection charge protection so you know it, it could be like those gone or something they're in parallel i don't know why they have two of them uh well obviously for the <laughs> for the current power capability but yeah so who knows right i what, what's an me f7 I don't know. That 8205A there looks like a uh, MOSFET. Like you can tell by the, you know, large, <laughs> large pins in there. And uh, yeah, there's not much else doing. Here you go. Bob's your uncle. JSCJ or a JCET. Take your pick. <laughs> Jiangzhu Qingjing Electronics Co. It's a dual jobby. That's why that was, was we were showing, uh, showing over here that... Yeah, two of them. So that's all making sense, and there doesn't look to be any issues there at all. So does anyone want to hazard a guess as to where the fault lies? I have to uh, feed in some external voltage and start seeing if it gets through or not. My PCB's come a guts to here. Look at that. She's a bit, uh, bit janky. So, yeah, put that back down, no wackers, and external battery bank, it's not even staying on. So, presumably, there's nothing getting in there. PC doesn't get any blah, 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 when I plug it in, LED display over there. So anyway, there should be voltage going into that now. Okay, so we've got ourselves 3.58. Well, might be coming to guts up because our battery negative there is uh, on the other side. So let's take... Uh, do we have a convenient uh, ground? We'll just take this ground point here, shall we? So that's our input 
background, our input reference. So, so input referred, as you'd call it, five volts. There you go. No wackers. So we've got our five volt in, and in relation to that, we've got 4.3 volts out. There you go. So um, that 4.3 volts should be enough to do the business. So, um, it's not easy to probe stuff under there to get the oscilloscope, like physically get the oscilloscope probe under there and stuff, because this, this uh, inductor's not going to, she's not going to bend out easily. I think the li likely culprit here is uh, this um, battery protection. It's not like, I don't think, sorry, I'm probably not going to be able to repair this, because like, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm, I'm not going to like, well, I might. If I can find out what that part is, I could order it, I guess. But uh, I'm right right off the bat, I'd be guessing that uh, they have failed. Now, there is a chance that if I actually um, disconnect the battery and reconnect, like there might, it might be in some like latch up state or something like that. So that's actually worth a shot, I think. Um, without, you know, going deeper, I'd say physically, let's just physically remove the power from the uh, battery, and we can do that conveniently with the terminal up here. So if we physically remove the voltage from the thing, I would, I'd be tempted to do that first, just to see if we can give it a kick in the pants. It might, it might be in some latch up state that's just, these, these, these uh, protection devices have kicked in and they go, no, we don't want a bar of it, um, but they're not faulty. Well, you know, they haven't uh, failed, and uh, yeah, so let's let's go in there, wet my sponge, that's what she said, all right, so let's what? melt melt that, there we go, and let's put it back, see if that made a difference, no, external, no, that didn't, that didn't help, but that was worth a shot, okay, so I'm not having any luck on the uh, MEF7 with uh, battery protection or anything like that. Yeah, so they're a six pin wide body jobby. So maybe you can do some parametric search for package or something like that. Because, you know, when, when you've got a rather unusual package like that, um, you might be able to narrow it down that way. So I'm on the digi keys here. Multifunction, battery protection, 2400 of them. Can we search for package? Six pin power WDFN shift highlight all the six pin jobbies. Let's see what we've got here. Well, doesn't look like it's that, so we can go back and have a look, right? So it's actually got two like the separate pins on each side, it's not one wide pin, okay? So you can rule that out if you want the wide body jobby. Although, the, you know, the same device could be available in uh, multiple uh, packages, of course. And then it might not be available on your digi keys. You might have to search your LCSCs or something else. So, and then you've got to assume that they got the right photo and, you know, like everything else. All, all the traps for young players of trying to find stuff like this. Yeah, nah. Yeah, they all seem to like that wide pin, don't they? Seems to be all the rage with the kiddies. And we get into the ones that don't have a photo. So yeah, I'd say that's a WFDN, which is wide, um, uh, wide format um, DFN package. We can go for DFN6 on uh, LCSC. There's lots of them. And they do actually have the chip size on there, so that's pretty handy. There you go, like we got wide jobbies, something like that. So unfortunately the markings on top are the problem, right? So unless you can luck upon that, I don't think you'll find it in a, like a decoder or something like that. I mean, let's just choose this random one. Let's choose this random jobby here. You know, thermal pad on the bottom, six pins, right? If we go back over, okay, yeah, the two at the top, right? So it's a standard pin out. So there's probably a whole bunch of them like that, and that's the internal diagram for those playing along at home. Anyway, our problem here is that, let's go back to the video tape, and our problem is that we know the cells are good, okay? So I'm gonna 
I've had this left off for a while. Let me just reconnect that in there. So the problem is, like, this, these MOSFETs should be on under, like, all, like all regular circumstances, because it's a cell protection device uh, designed to protect cells, so they will, so the MOSFET will open in case of, you know, any sort of uh, issue with the cells. We know the cell voltage is good, right? So if we actually measure the voltage across there, and we've got three and a half, which is the, they're open, right? There, well, it's going to measure exactly the same. They're open. So, looks like our MOSFETs have opened up. Um, and they're doing their job of protecting the cell. <laughs> protecting the cell from what? I don't know. The cell is, uh, is fully charged. So, unless we can figure out, I'm going to call it quits there for today. I just wanted to make this a quick video. Can somebody please, you know, you might be able to put any, like, generic equivalent in there, perhaps. You know, should be able to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right? Can, uh, yeah, leave it in the comments down below if you know what those jobbies there are, because they have well and truly opened. And uh, leave your thoughts and comments down below about anything else, if you've spotted anything, but I can't spot anything. And uh, we get, you know, we feed in 5 volts, we get it in, it goes through the MOSFET there. Um, so, you know, uh, assuming the controller's good. Um, it should sell cells fully charged, which, yeah, last time I used it, I left it in the fully charged state. Cell protection. It's come a gutter. Anyway, there you go. Quick second channel video. Thoughts and comments down below, please. And maybe I could uh, do a second video replacing that once I have some further info. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. Catch you next time.